Okay, in this video, I will show you guys one of my favorite topics in differential equations. It's this right here, which it says the rate of change of the amount is proportional to the amount itself. And let me tell you, this right here is so, so, so powerful. And in fact, this is how we come up with the exponential growth function. And I will demonstrate how to solve this right here. First of all, a differential equation is pretty much an equation with derivative in it. And whenever you see the rate of change, that's the derivative. And right here, we are talking about the amount. So let's use some variables. Of course, let's use capital A for amount. So when you see this, you write it down as dA dt. And usually, you know, things change with respect to time. All right, so that's pretty much it. When you see the rate of change, that's the derivative. And when you see the word is proportional, when you see this phrase, I should say, this is how you do it. Yes, of course, it's the equal sign, but when you say it's proportional, there is a constant multiple, so you multiply this by k with something, okay? So whenever you see it's proportional, you just change like that to it's equal to k times something else. Times what? Well, times the amount itself. I call a to be the amount. Well, I'll just put down a right here as well. And there you have it. This is the differential equation. And of course, if you have initial conditions, you can solve for the unknown constants later on, but let's just go through how to solve this right here, and we'll find the general solution. And here is the powerful part before we continue. This right here, as I said, is how we come up with the exponential growth equation, or the decay equations. This is really powerful if you're talking about investing. For example, if you have a lot of money, it's much easier for you to make even more money because the rate of change is proportional to how much money you have. And let me just give you guys an actual example. Suppose you, my viewer, right now, okay? I know you have been watching my videos and I want to say thank you so much. I love you guys, seriously. Thank you guys so much for the support. Yeah. So what I'll do is I would like to ask you how much cash you have right now and I will triple it for you. Leave a comment down below and let me know how you feel. I think some people will be really excited. Some people will say, okay. Some people will say, eh. But leave a comment down below. Let me know how you feel. Anyway, here we go. We are going to solve this differential equation by separating the variables. This is how we do it. So we have dA, dt, treat these as differentials. What you do first is you multiply dt on both sides. I recommend you guys, whenever you have dA, dt, dy, dx, whatsoever, Multiply the differentials on both sides because you should not have a differential in the denominator when you're trying to solve a differential equation. So they are gone. And the idea is that we want to isolate the variables in the following sense. I want to keep A and DA together, and I want to keep T and the other variables, the A's together and T's together. That's what I mean. All right. So you also have to notice if you have DA, DT, then a and t are your variables, the k is just a constant. k is called the constant of proportionality. Anyway, enough talking on that. Multiply dt on both sides, and you see, here we have dt, means we are in the t world. a is unfortunately not allowed. So what we do is, of course, we can just divide both sides by a, and I'll just put down one over a right here, so that this and that will be canceled in. So you just do some algebra to prep. All the a's together and all the t's together, constants, they are good. They are good in either world, okay? They're always invited. Anyway, here we go. This is 1 over a dA is equal to k times dt, like that. We are good. And a lot of students, okay, after you guys finish the integration technique section in your book, you thought you are done with integrals. No, you're not. Because right here, this is what we do. We are not just going to integrate once, but we also integrate another one. So you integrate pretty much twice when you solve a differential equation by separating the variables, right? Because this is how you pretty much get rid of the differentials. And let's see, the integral of one over a, you can just write down natural log of absolute value of a like this. And technically you should put down plus c, and this is the constant from the left-hand side, so you should write it down C1. And the right-hand side, the integral of k in the t world is kt. And same thing, you put down another constant, so maybe plus C2. So this is what you should do, right? 
But in fact, you can skip this step because later on, you can just subtract C1 on both sides. So you can cancel this out. And you are saying Ln absolute value of A, this is equal to Kt and C2 minus C1. C2 is a constant, C1 is a constant. When you subtract constants, you still get a constant. So you can just keep track as saying plus C3. It's a new constant. You don't know what it is yet, but it's okay. Just write it down, C3. And right here, you technically still have to keep the absolute value because if you didn't know what kind of amount you're dealing with, it could be a negative amount. So you do have to have the absolute value inside of the LN like this. Anyway, we're pretty much done. We solved the integrals already, but we want to get the A by itself as well. So what we do is, this is inside of the LN, so we can do e to the power and e to the power so that this and that will cancel and we pretty much will get absolute value of A, the absolute value of states, and this. And remember, back in the days when you have 2 to the third power two times 2 to the fifth power, what do you guys do with the exponents? You just add it. 2 to the 3 plus 5 and you get 8 for the exponent. But if you're adding the exponents, you can look backwards too. Look, here, these two are the exponents because you did e to this power. I will do it backwards. So I will write it as e to the kt's power times e to the c3's power, like that. Just look at it backwards. And the reason I want to do that is because e is a constant, c3 is a constant, a constant to a constant power is a constant. So we can actually continue. Right here, we have the absolute value of A. Let me just put another constant for this. I will, of course, put it as C4. <laughs> and then this right here is E to the KT, like that. We are almost done because we have the absolute value right here. I want to get rid of that. And how can we do it? Well, back in the days, if you need to solve the equation, absolute value of X is equal to 2. What are the solutions? 2 and negative 2 for x, right? So what you can do is you can just pretty much get rid of the absolute value, but you have to put down plus minus on the right hand side. So right here, I will tell you guys to do the same thing. To show work, get rid of the absolute value, but be sure you put down the plus minus on the right hand side. So now you can legitimately put down a, and this is equal to, yes, you have a positive c4. And yes, you have a negative C4, but positive C4 is a constant, negative C4 is also a constant. You might as well just call that to be another constant or label that as C5. And you have that e to the kt's power. And here you have it. A is equal to some number times e to the kt's power. And in fact, this C5 is the initial amount. So let me say I will just put this down right here, let a of zero be a naught like this. And the style of writing this is that you are saying when t is equal to zero, this is your amount. So with this initial condition, okay, suppose if you just say a zero is this notation, you can plug in this right here for the a, which is a naught now, that should be equal to c5 we don't know, and then you plug in 0 for t. You have e to the k times 0. Okay, this is just a naught. And c5 is c5. And this right here is just pretty much 1. So you say c5 is equal to a naught, the initial amount. This number is what you get when t is equal to 0 in the amount equation. So finally, this is what you can present. This is what you can do to present your answer. a as a function of time. Okay, a as a function of time, use the parentheses for that, is equal to the initial amount times e, the special number e, to the kt's power. And doesn't this look familiar to your usual a is equal to the principal times the e times the rt's power when you're talking about investing, the typical PERT equation. But Anyway, yes, I dropped my eraser. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is it, okay? And then I will do a few more examples for you guys. In fact, I have a lot of examples already, so you guys can check the uh, playlist.
That's it.